Hey, this is James C. Khan, and today we're going to look at the voxel code living within the libgdx repository. Uh, it's been there for a while. I don't know the history of it. It uh, looked like it used to be a test, but it's not actually hooked up to the libgdx test, so it's kind of hidden away in there. And uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to call it, let's call it like a libgd exploration video. I won't be doing a tutorial as normal. M more like I'll be experimenting with the code, maybe adding in some features that aren't there. And um, it might be helpful to those who are interested in the voxel code and trying to understand it. So with that being said, if we take a quick look at the libgdx repository, we can find the voxel code here under um, our test, gdx test, and source g3dd, g3d, voxel. We have these classes, voxel, chunk, test, and world. And they're not actually hooked up to run as, as part of the test runner. So I've just very quickly modified that file to include the voxel test so that we can run it and see what it looks like on libgdx. Now, like I said, I don't know the history of this test or what its original purpose was. It's not actually hooked up. But uh, I know I've pointed some people here in Discord before when they're asking questions about voxels and things like that. So I think this is a good time to maybe tinker with this uh, code. Maybe, uh, you know, I'm going to learn some new things about it because I've never really worked with voxels before. And hopefully it will be informative for others to watch as well. So we're going to jump right in here. I've created a new libgdx project. I just called it GDX Voxels up here. And I'll probably, you know, share this code uh, on the YouTube uh, description so that you guys can follow along. And I've moved or I've moved over the voxel code from the libgdx repository into this project and just made a couple of tweaks to get it running real quick. Uh, in our GDX game class, kind of our entry point, um, I've changed it to be a game, extends game, and then set screen new voxel game. If we look at that. This was the voxel test when it was in the libgdx repository. I just did a little rename there. And it now as a screen, it extends screen adapter. So that just allows us to call set screen and, and launch this voxel game. And that'll start up the voxel world. But now we're independent of the libgdx repository. So we're free to tinker with it and do as we please. And so what we're going to do today is um, we're going to run or we're going to try to add some frustum calling to this uh, project for performance reasons. And the reason why is when I try to run this application on my uh, on my Android phone, which is a 2017 model um, Android, it's a Samsung Note 8. I was getting about 35 to 40 frames a second. And I wanna see if we can get that up to 60 frames on the, on the Android phone. And to do that, we can add frustum calling. And actually, let me bring it back up so I can kind of show you something here. It's, it might be difficult to read, but we have an FPS readout that is reading 60 right now. But we also have this visible chunks. Uh, it says we have 958 out of 1,600 visible chunks. So that's quite a lot of um, chunks that are being rendered right now. And um, if we use frustum calling, we can reduce that. Because right now, all the chunks around that you can see as I rotate, they're all being um, rendered at the same time but we only need to render the ones that are visible and that is what we're going to achieve. So we're gonna see this number, which is 958. It's gonna drop down quite a bit uh, once we uh, enable frustum calling. And if you were curious where that 1600 chunk number is coming from, uh, if we head over to voxel game and we look here, voxel world equals new voxel world, it's passing in these values. Um, we have 20 chunks on the uh, X, plane on the z plane 20 and then we have four so that's the vertical going from bottom to top or we have four chunks of voxels uh, and what the chunks are just i guess um, maybe let's just visualize the chunks in case you're not familiar with that and to do that i'm going to set the velocity on our character or our camera controller to be a little faster just so i can quickly get where i want to go um, now we can kind of visualize the chunks in two ways. One, you can see these are our chunks on the side or our vertical chunks going up. So that's what that looks like. And they're all just different colors for now. And if you look at overhead, you can see all these different um, squares, right? Or chunks of different colors. And so if you look at these chunks on the inside, chunk is a, is a certain size, which you can define in the code. And we go down and we just have several layers of these chunks um, vertically as well. And then you can see we have 20 going across on our X and Z. We have 20 chunks going around and that just creates this giant world that we see. 
So let's go ahead and try to add some frustum coaling. Okay, to add the frustum coaling, let's first take a look at how this is working very quickly. Uh, if we take a look at the voxel world, we will see that it is implementing renderable provider. And if we scroll down, that allows us to get this uh, get renderables method, which passes an array of renderables. And we, in this method, are responsible for populating that list or that array, should I say, with all the renderables that we want to render. Now, each uh, voxel chunk is iterated through in this uh, method, and then we um, process it. Well, we can look at this later. This is for if the mesh is dirty. And then we uh, set some materials, mesh parts. We set the mesh on this renderable, and we go ahead and add it to the list, and then that allows us to get rendered. If we go back to voxel game, uh, that allows us implementing that renderable provider allows us to pass in the voxel world class as a um, parameter to the model batch. You can see it takes in a renderable provider. So that being the case, if we're going to add frustum coaling, we'll probably want to add it right here when we're going through the list to determine what meshes or what chunks are we going to render. Uh, we can add it right here in this loop. And uh, if we don't, if you don't want to render it, then we will continue. We'll skip right here. And to do that, we're going to need to know we're going to have ac we're going to need to have access to the camera that's being used, which is uh, which lives in this voxel game class. So we're going to add a new parameter to our voxel world to pass in the camera. I'll hit Alt Enter and I'm going to add a perspective camera to the voxel world constructor. Then here I'm going to go this dot camera equals camera. So now our voxel world will know about the camera because we're going to need it. Now I'll just say Alt Enter, Create Field, Perspective Camera, and now we have access to that in our voxel world. If we go back down to our Get Renderables, uh, we're going to add a new method called um, Is Chunk Visible. So we'll come down below, Public, or it doesn't need to be public. We can put Private Boolean Is Chunk Visible, and it's going to take in a voxel chunk. And so now we're going to need uh, a couple vector threes, a couple new variables added to this class. Uh, for the purpose of doing the frustum check. And so I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to copy these over and I'll quickly talk about them. So we've added a new vector three uh, called chunk center. And um, this is going to, I'll talk through it when we use it uh, down below. We're going to use that in our is chunk visible method. And we're just going to reuse the same vector three over and over again, not instead of creating a whole bunch of them. We also have this chunk dimensions vector three. This isn't going to change. It'll always stay the same. And it just represents our chunk size, X, Y, and Z. These are likely, uh, these should probably always be kept the same. Currently, they're 16 by 16 by 16. And you'll probably always keep them the same. Even if you raise these numbers, you'll likely raise them all by the same value, whether it's eight by eight by eight or et cetera. So that's going to have our chunk dimensions. And I also have this chunk half dimension. I'm just caching this value, which is going to be our chunk size. And as I said, since they're all the same, they're all eight. I'm just taking chunk size X, dividing that by, or they're all 16. I'm sorry. So we're going to take 16, divide that by two. That is half of the chunks dimension right there on all three X, Y, and Z. Now that we have those variables that so we come back down here, we're going to go chunk center dot set. And we're going to set the, um, the uh, offset of the chunk. So the chunk offset is, and we might, you know, we'll probably play with that some more later, but we got this chunk offset X. That's, that is the chunks. We could think of that as the chunks position in the world. Uh, inside the voxel world, that is where the chunk is positioned. So we have a uh, chunk offset X plus the half dimension. We'll do chunk offset. Uh, we'll do this for all three. So we have chunk dot offset dot Y plus the half dimension. And then chunk.offset.z plus the half dimension as well. And the reason why we're adding the half dimensions is um, this X, Y, and Z offset position on the chunk, what only represents one point on that chunk, right? I, it may be one of the bottom corners, probably one of the bottom corners of the chunk, I, I believe. I'm not 100% sure right now off the top of my head. But we want to get to the center of this chunk. So that's why we're taking X, Y, and Z. And we're adding half of the dimension, that 8, 8, and 8. And that should, I believe that should put us, uh, that should set this vector 3 to the center position of the chunk. And then we're going to go camera dot frustum. And then there's all these different methods, point and frustum, sphere, 
bounds. For now, I'm just going to go with the bounds and frust them. And we're going to pass in that center. And we're also going to pass in the chunk dimensions. And that's going to be a re return. So we're going to return camera uh, frust them, bounds, and frust them. So this is going to tell us, hey, uh, based on this center position and being this dimension, is this actually is this object actually visible to the camera right now? We come back up here and now we can call if not is chunk visible. Pass in the current chunk that we're iterating on. If it's not visible, then continue. And so we would we just um, for this iteration for this loop because this is going to be called every frame. Uh, for this iteration, if it's not visible, uh, you know, don't add it to this renderable list, and so it won't get rendered. Now, if we go ahead and play the project again, um, in the bottom left, we can see that the number is much smaller now. Before, it was like 958 all the time, no matter what. And uh, let us um, let me speed up the, the camera real quick because it's moving kind of slow, just so I can kind of show how this is working. Um, controller dot set velocity. I think I had that there already, and I removed it. Uh, so I'm, I'm just adding that back. Let's play it again. And we can see the visible chunks is at what's saying 256 right now, but you can see it's constantly changing as I move the camera around. So it's only rendering the chunks that should be rendered that can be seen. This is much more performant. And you can see if I look all the way up, well then it's zero because we're no longer rendering any ch any chunks at all. Now if I move all the way out, guess what? We get right back to that uh, 958 value where it's rendering all of them. And you can see that number just starts dropping as I tilt the camera up. We're rendering less and less and less. And when I tested this change on my uh, on my Android phone, I'm now getting 60 frames per second. So that one little change, as quick as it is, just gave me a 20 uh, FPS boost, adding the frust I'm calling here to our chunks. That's going to be it for the first video. I'm trying to keep them as short as possible. And uh, so look out for the next video. I'm just going to add, you know, we'll just we're just going to tinker with it and see what we can come up with. So thanks for watching.